Hello Aces, welcome back to module six, lesson 3.2, launching your own campaign. In the last lesson, we talked about phase one, setup phase, goal setting, timeline, offering, designs, and photos. In today's lesson, we're gonna be focusing on how do you get PR to talk about you? How do you set up your own influencer launch campaign? How are you supposed to figure out the operations? The day of the, la the launch day that is happening and analyzation. How do you rinse and repeat these campaigns so then that way you always get these amazing results for your brand. Now, let's dive right in. PR. PR is a gift that keeps giving and this is something that I always say because not only does it generate brand awareness for your brand but also it provides a lot of online traffic back to your website. How is that the case? It is because when a publication links to your website, your website is much more credible in Google's eyes and thus when people search for best ice cream in Vancouver, our brand pops up. Also, it acts as great social proof so when other and your customers are stalking you, they see many different publications talking about you, then you're much more likely to win their trust to try out your place. Also, ripple effect. What is the ripple effect? It is when one news outlet talks about you and the other journalists and the other news outlet did not want to be left out. They have FOMO, they have a fear of missing out and thus they will be talking about you as well if your campaign has that launch angle. And that's the reason why I always say PR is a gift that keeps giving because you only need to do that one thing once and once it gets picked up, it has exponential results for your campaign. Now, what is it that PR are wanting, okay? Media, they all want good content. They want something that people are talking about and we need to understand that their job is finding content. So we need to give them fresh content, we need to give them an angle that they can talk about, and we need to do all the research on the journalists, the media outlets, the community, and we need to provide all these information to them in a silver platter, so easy for them to just pick it up, repackage it, and throw it back into their own community. And that's our job if we're looking for free PR. A good story, a pitch will grab both the journalist's attention and also your customer's attention. So spend the time in crafting the right offer in the last lesson, okay? This is crucial in creating a PR that would work. Now, you, you might be asking, hey Wilson, okay, you know what? I figured out my angle, I figured out what's going on. How do I find PR? And that's what we're gonna be talking about. How do you find PRs? First step is to look at your competitors, the top dogs within your industry. For us, it's Ernest Ice Cream. Study the context on why they were covered and look into the journalists that covered them. So after we typed in the ice cream shop, these are the ice cream, these are the publications, Daily Hive, Scout Magazine, Eat Magazine, Straight, Edible Canada. These are all the publications that pop up. We now, understand these are the publications that would talk about an ice cream shop and thus we would dig into who are the journalists that writes for these publications and then that way we can earn our own press release. So all you need is an angle guys. Understand this is that PR, they're always looking for an angle to talk about a certain story. So the better the angle is, the more and highly likely chances that you're gonna get featured. Now, how are you gonna be able to do that? Finding the journalist, after you clicked into the article that we saw, like right here, click into the article, click into the article, click into all these articles, and then after you've done that, on the top, you're gonna to see the journalist who wrote the article. And then after you click into it, another page would often pop up, and you're gonna have the email, the email contact, the Twitter accounts, the Instagram, and also you can actually look into the bio of their um, of, of the publication. Then you're gonna be able to find a lot more information about them. And something that I often do is just Google their name. Sometimes they don't have their contact info in these bios, which is okay. You just need to take a step further into understanding what is their digital footprint? How else can I find them? And I find that oftentimes when I Google their, their full name with the publication that they wrote for, their email usually pops up. So try that out if you are having difficulties finding the contact 
through the bio section. Now, right now I'm sharing with you the press release, a generic press release that we often follow in order for us to create these press release that we send to the publications. First up, um, and mind you, you can go into the link below, download this template for us to go ahead and do this together, okay? One item that, and these are the four, seven parts. Headline, we always wanna be able to create a capturing headline. This is your angle, this is the, the, the pitch, this is like what entices people to read on. World's first cannabis infused soft served ice cream. Wow, that is a headline guys, capturing the attention. Next up is the problem. Why did we create a uh, cannabis infused ice cream? Well, it's because the scene is boring. Uh, solution, and that's why we decided to extract THC from weed and throw it into ice cream. The quotes, quotes so then that way they can quote us in the publication. Data, what are some of the data that supports our claims, supports our solution? Call to action, what do we want them to do? And as a summary, just to recap everything, that's what we need to have into this whole press release. And mind you, this product that we're offering isn't even real. We created this as a bogus, as a hoax, so that people can talk about it. And if this became one of the best campaigns that we, we made, not in a way that it was a negative light, but we twisted it in a very creative way. Because as you can see right here, we sent this out on March the 27th, just in time for April to the 20th, so 420. We wanna be able to have this as a 420 um, campaign. The templates that I shared with you, make sure that you contact the journalists and understand the fact that they get tons and tons of pitches every single day. So make it super easy for them. Hand it to them in a silver platter. That's what's gonna get you featured. Copy and paste your press release in the email and on top of that, create a, a Google Drive, a shared Google Drive. We're gonna put in your press release, your campaign photos, and a photo of you. And that's exactly what we did. The press release is right here, campaign photos and photo of use, just in case they wanna feature you. These are where they're gonna get all of their assets for that. So you don't wanna go back and forth with them. You don't want them to feel like, hey, you know what? I love your story, can you send me more information? Or can you send me some pictures? Or can you send me some videos? That becomes a very, that's not silver platter. That becomes work for them. And um, on the contrary, if you create everything for them, so then that way they don't even need to come back to you for information. That's the ideal experience that we want our PRs to have. Some pro tip that I wanna share with you. When is the best time to send emails to the PR? 8.55 right before they get to work and right before they think about when to have lunch, 10.10. Use a tool, a Google Chrome tool called Mix Max, okay guys? Download this Google Chrome tool because this allows you to stalk on the people that, um, that you send emails to to see whether they have opened it and whether they have seen it or not. So if they have seen it, make sure you follow up if you don't hear back from them. It is not annoying for you to follow up. On the contrary, it's actually a very, very uh, welcoming nudge for them because as you can appreciate, journalists, PRs, they get hundreds of emails every day. So even if they liked your article, things might have pulled them in a different direction and thus for you to follow up with them two days after, guys, two days after you send your initial one is the perfect time for you to follow up. So make sure that you follow up with them. PR is an art, guys. If you don't get any hits, don't think that, hey, you know what, the journalists don't work or they hate me, so on and so forth. There must be a reason why. You need to figure out what didn't work, whether it's your angle, whether the fact that what you're writing is very confusing, study it because that's what's gonna get you free publication and free advertisement again and again, if you do the right thing. Next up, pro tip number two, guys. Pro tip number two is the fact that if you don't have the patience to send out publications and PRs to all the publications, then understanding that PR is also a business, okay? They need to make money too, and which is the reason why you can actually purchase articles written about you, okay? So if you have the budget and if you don't have the patience, then you can reach out to their 
publication, ask them for the media kit, ask them for the rates, case studies, so on and so forth. So then that way you can secure a PR spot if you have doubt in your ability to get it organically. Next up, influencers. I hope you have and understand fully how you can reach out to PR. And this is a very, very important lesson or step because PR is super, super helpful. It allows your brand to sh be shown to thousands, if not tens of thousands of people locally within your area. So investing in PR is very, very crucial to your campaigns and your restaurant's success. So definitely do not overdo or oversee this whole step. Next up is influencers. Think about influencers as the cool kids around the block in school, okay? They have a community that looks up to them, that worships them, that admires them. So anything that they say carries much more weight. So if they say that your product is good, your services are great, your food is delicious, then that's gonna be able to translate to a lot of all of their followers, much better than what you have to say about yourself, okay? This is also a good boost and of awareness if you are able to incorporate the influencers into your launch campaigns to create hype. Once again, if you're thinking about doing influencers or PR, I would do them both at the same time because that's when you get this really massive results that when people are searching and when people are looking on their phones, they see, oh, you know what? The local publication is talking about you. Oh, you know what? A influencer is talking about you. So these are additional touch points that allows you and your brand to be in the front of the mind of your potential customers. And thus the results would be much better if you can coordinate everything to happen all at once. Once again, in the sheet below, download the template to see how you can find influencers for your VIP event, okay? How are you gonna do that? First step is to search for the biggest hashtags within your area. After you have, for us, dished van, okay? As 136K post. That's a very hyper-targeted hashtag that is only relevant in Vancouver because for us, we understand this is a publication specifically for Vancouver. And now what we wanna do is look at the profiles of the first nine square, the top tab, because these guys obviously created something special that people wanna watch. And a lot of times they are influencers, okay? Step number three is to keep note of their number of followers, the demographic, that they're there not just for vacation. So a lot of times when people post stuff, they post stuff while they're on vacation. And thus we don't wanna reach the influencers that are only coming and dropping by for a second because it becomes pointless for them to come back to you again. You wanna find local influencers, okay? So we wanna be able to find where they're from. We need to find, check out what their engagement is like and check out their, their likes because you're gonna be able to use this later on. Next up is look at who they have tagged in their photo. Usually they tag their friends and all their friends are influencers because they hang out together. And on top of that, they oftentimes tag media outlets as well because they work hand in hand with media all the time. So as you can see right here, these are what the, the tags and these are the, the, the comments of their whole crew. So look at the people who have commented in their photos so then that way you can stalk them. This is where you're gonna be able to uncover their whole entire crew of influencers. And usually influencers hang out within themselves because they have they talk about the same topic. And as you can see right here in the comment section, the once we click into Pearl the Foodie, oh, Pearl the Foodie just so happens to be another Vancouver foodie. Deanna Wu oh, just so happens to be another foodie in Vancouver and they all have pretty good following, 20K, 16K, and this becomes a great way for you to compile your list of influencers. Write down all their contact info as well and I would highly recommend putting all this down into an Excel document so then that way everything is neat and tidy. Once again, in the link below, download the template to follow along. Next up is to plan your VIP tasting event. Create a tasting menu specifically for your influencers because you want them to have a pleasant experience. You want them to, it would be over the top, okay? So then that way they can feel 
your product. They can feel the experience and then that way they would be much more likely to write about you. Figure out the format. Is it a sit down tasting? Is there a specific set time, start time? Is it gonna be a whole cohort that comes in at the same time, leaves at the same time? Or is it a drop in kind of thing? Is there an educational portion or is there a speech? Is the whole experience interactive or not? So plan this whole format out and then you wanna reach out to influencers and let them know what is going on. How big do you want your taste testing to be? This all comes back down to the budget because the bigger the budget or the more people you want to show up, the more the better the experience you want to um, deliver, the more expensive it becomes, right? Think about the operations, think about the customer experience. This is key when it comes to the whole VIP tasting event is the experience. You need to be very, very careful and very thoughtful on how you're testing and how you're setting everything up. The bigger it is, more difficult to pull off because there's more and more coordination. How can you make this taste testing memorable? What kind of items can you do with them? Are you gonna allow influencers to make their own products or are you gonna have a goodie bag with treats and coupons so then that way your influencers would feel welcome and feel that, hey, this is a really fun event. Sending the VIP tasting invites, guys. Invites can be sent through emails. It could be sent out Instagram DMs completely fine. Sending messages through DMs are becoming more and more prominent. So don't feel like, oh, you know what? This needs to be a proper email invitation or I'm gonna send you an invitation to your home. We don't need that no more. Sliding into the DMs is the best way to get a hold of your influencers, okay? Provide an, a brief introduction to your food, beverage shop, your restaurant, and what the VIP tasting is for. Give them an idea of what they'll be tasting. Include dates and location of the events and make sure they RSVP with you. If you don't give them a deadline, they're not gonna adhere to it. They think that it's always ongoing and there's no urgency. So make sure you give them a deadline. This is something that a lot of people make as a mistake is that a lot of people are forcing, a lot of restauranteurs are forcing influencers that, hey, because you came through the doors, you must post for us. And if you do that, that leaves a very, very bad taste to the influencer's mouth and they do, would not wanna work with you in the future. And that's the reason why if your food is good, if your experience is good, then they will talk about you eventually. But if they did not enjoy their experience, then why would you want them to talk about you? You don't want that, which is the reason why you would not wanna set the expectation for them to must post on your whole experience because ultimately that becomes the biggest frustrations for them in order for them to actually post something that they don't enjoy, okay? You wanna build a strong relationship with these influencers because once again, I've been telling you and preaching that these campaigns are ongoing. You need to run campaigns on a regular basis every quarter to stay relevant. And you're gonna be able to make friends with these influencers all the time because every time you have something new, you wanna reach out to them. So make sure you have a solid relationship with your influencers. Ask for honest feedback. A lot of times they understand that, hey, food might not be the greatest right now and it will improve, but you need to communicate with them and you need to include and take into advice of their feedback. Pro tip number three is that influencers are often friends with other influencers. So consider giving them a plus one. So when you're sending an invite for them to be, hey, you know what, come in, try out a new flavor, oftentimes I would extend an additional plus one. If you happen to have any friends that may find this interesting as well, feel free to invite them along for the VIP tasting event. Not only would they feel appreciated, but it also just feels better to have someone that you know, a friend that you know at an event. Try sticking with at least 70% food influencers that you reach out to, and the 30% 30, 30 would could be lifestyle influencers, bloggers, so on and so forth, less directed at food. Having a combination of both allows you to reach different types of demographic out there and thus allows you to be able to see better returns. Host the VIP tasting a few days before your launch of your new product or your new location to build that hype, build that FOMO, build that everyone has been there already, I wanna go there as well. Next up, regardless of the format, make sure that your food looks amazing because that's the reason why they're here and that's how they can promote for you is through how good and how nice 
the photos are, okay? Sit them by the window because influencers like natural lighting. They like natural lighting because it makes their food look the best. Uh, and if the food making process is interesting, feel free to include them in and include them into the kitchen, into the creation process, and then tell them about your story. This is a great time for them to actually understand more about your concept, your vision, and while they're actually creating um, more content for their post. Understanding and working with influencers is an art and make sure you guys go back in this lesson and make sure you go through this again because I'm flying through this because there's just so much content to cover. Nonetheless, this is a very, very important process in order for you to gain that traction and have lineups out the doors because that's exactly the tactic that I've used to generate that much response. We ultimately sold seven locations and and internationally and got our ice cream shop acquired and all of this thanks to consistent running of events. So I'm sharing with you my farm, make sure you guys take notes and go ahead with it. Next up operation guys, create a campaign debrief document for your team that includes all the parts. Timeline, all the marketing, operations, um, creation of the new uh, product, the finances, and make sure everyone is on the same page because ultimately we need everyone on the team to roll in sync towards your goal. If you don't have a debrief document, if you don't let them know, and if you don't show them your objective and how to do things, how can you expect them to execute on your behalf? They can't, which is the reason why you need to spend the time to have all these things down to debrief your team. You understand the vision, but your team that is executing might not. So make sure everyone is on the same page. That is super crucial. A lot of things to think about during the launch. Do you have enough staff? Do you have enough ingredients? Are all the staff well trained? How long does it take to make an item? Placement of the ingredients allows you to have better flow within your operations in order for you to have um, and manage a long lineup. Is Wi-Fi available? Because a lot of influencers, they would like to post stories while they're there. And that's the reason why having Wi-Fi is essential for them to have a better experience as well. Think about all these things, flush it through multiple times and think about how you can make the experience seamless. Next up is showtime guys, launch day. Have a quick motivation chat with your team, a prep talk, so then that way you can encourage them, give them that morale. Do your best, have fun, and things will go wrong, guys, 100%. It's like planning for a wedding. Everything will always go wrong, but no one will ever notice. So make sure you guys have fun throughout the process and that when things are going wrong, it is okay. Jot them down and figure out what you would wanna do things a little bit differently. If you're really busy hosting the event, then have a trusted member that understands the strategies, understand the goals, the timelines, have them take the notes on what is some of the inefficiencies and some of the feedback that they would need for the future. Always, always keep a fun and positive morale for the team because everyone looks up to you. If you're having a bad time, if you're stressing your balls off, then that's just gonna affect the whole team. Make sure you keep a positive morale. Keep, during the campaign, keep watch of the public sentiment. If everyone seems to be a little bit pissed off because the food is just not there and it's taking an hour to make, then make sure you go and make them feel better. Make a joke, tell them, hey, you know what? I didn't even know it's gonna take an hour. I'm, I'm blown away myself, let's play a game. Or hey, you know what? To thank you guys, I'm just gonna give you guys gift cards and on top of that, I'm gonna host another event later on. So if you wanna come back, great. If not, do something that is entertaining for them. I'm not giving you any, uh, I'm not giving that any justice, but nonetheless, do something fun, do something lighthearted and make sure you keep tabs on the public sentiment, okay? Check out the PR hits, social media engagement, online discussion, word of the mouth discussion. Just go there, listen. Don't hide behind the shelf. Don't hide in the kitchen. Go out there, engage with your people. Pro tip is to always ask your customers where they have heard about you, whether it's an influencer or it's through your promotion or through your ads. Share the positive sentiment that you receive online on your social media platform. Share the PR hits with your team. Share all 
the share to all your different channels because that's how you're going to be able to generate FOMO for the people that haven't been there and make sure you share reviews as well. Build social proof. Trust is the only thing why someone will buy from you. So make sure you share all these things in order for you to build that trust and confidence for people to come back again and again. Next up is analyze. This is something that often a lot of people do not do. If you do not analyze, if you don't have a debrief session to see how you did, to look back at your goals, to see if you hit your goals, to take notes and look at, hey, we've gone through the whole event, how can we improve? What are some of the inefficiency? If we don't do this, then we would not be able to improve for the next campaign, which is the reason why this is a crucial step. And oftentimes I would recommend having a debrief and an analyzation process no longer than a week after the event. Why is that the case? It is because it is still fresh in the mind. But on the other hand, you're giving time for these problems to soak up. You're giving time for you to actually play the whole event again and again in order for you to notice down what are some of the things that you would do differently if you were to do it again. So for example, creating the ice cream cone was too long. So we're gonna move the ingredients next to the machine so then that way it's better visuals and better experience. Create a final report with all your findings, with all the metrics from what people were sharing, and this becomes a great way for you to share it with your team, the success, the lessons that you have learned. This is some of the results that we have uh, completed for one of our campaigns, how many units sold, some of the outreach that we have, uh, Instagram, email blasts, the sales generated, and this just becomes a really good overview for us to run with our team. Now it is your turn, finally it is your turn to create a launch campaign, whether it's for your grand opening or if this is for a new product launch, this is very, very useful. Make sure you guys take notes and in the link below, we have all the resources for you to follow along. In this lesson, you finally have learned everything when it comes to launching a specific launch campaign. Really hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you put it into action and make it for good use. Next up, we're gonna be talking about the four golden pillars that's gonna drive predictable and consistent stream of customers for your restaurant. Make sure you guys go there and I'll see you guys in the next video.